Hi, in this tutorial we're going to go through a full Starlet and Piccolo app which actually lives in production so it'll be nice to see it all how it all hangs together. Um, so this is the project structure I tend to use for my projects so I have an image folder um, because I like to use Docker it doesn't really matter for the purposes of this tutorial and then I have this app folder. So we have an app.py and this is an ASCII app so um, Starlet is an ASCII framework, so ASCII is basically just a way of building apps in a way where they can work with other asynchronous frameworks. Um, so what we do here is we import Starlet and then we create this Starlet instance. So this is our main ASCII app and you can see it accepts a bunch of roots. So these roots can either be root or mount. So one thing that's really cool is you can mount other ASCII apps within another ASCII app. So these are just other ASCII apps. The route um, mounts an endpoint. So an endpoint is similar to a view in another framework like Django or Flask. And we'll have a look at those in a second. And then further down, you can bind to these events. So when the app starts, we use Engine Finder. This is a Piccolo feature. So what happens is in Piccolo, you define your database in this Piccolo conf file. So what app.py is doing is basically says, give me the database for this app and start the connection pool. Likewise, we bind into the shutdown event. We get the engine finder and we close the connection pool. And then when we run this file, we import Uvacorn. So this is a server which can run ASCII apps and we tell it to run our ASCII app. So as you can see, it's very simple and it looks very familiar um, if you use any of these frameworks in the past. Okay, so now let's have a look at our endpoints. Um, so you'll see here this home endpoint. So we inherit some HTTP endpoint. The main difference to other frameworks is it's an async method. So async basically means it's a coroutine and it can be awaited. So what happens with async IO is it can have multiple coroutines running concurrently. So if one coroutine is waiting for a database response, another coroutine could be running, um, which can improve the throughput of your web application. Um, so what happens is it passes in this re request object. Even though this is its own mini ASCII app, request kind of wraps it in quite a nice user-friendly way, um, rather than having to deal with the ASCII interface directly. So the first thing we do is we get a template using Ginger. So you'll see here I have a templates folder with all my templates. And then this uses Piccolo to get the data. So here we get all the posts. We select them where draft is not true. And then we order them. And likewise, we get the definitions. And then we pass that context to the template and we render it. And then we just return a HTML response. So it's all very simple, really. Um, and then we have some we have some other endpoints which are a bit more complex but it's still a similar idea um, so let me just get the search one so in our search endpoint we get the search term from the query parameters from this request object and then we basically filter the posts where the title is like the search term or the content is like the search term And then again, we, we get a template and then we render it and we return it in a HTML response. And then we have a sitemap as well, which basically gets all the posts, but this time it renders a plain text response instead of a HTML response. Um, so that's it. So that's our endpoints, our templates, and I'll just show you our tables.py. So this is how our scheme is defined. So we have an author for our posts. We have a post series, we have the actual post, and you can see here that this is similar to other ORMs you might have used, but this one's um, Piccolo, so it works asynchronously if you choose to. Um, again, just some more tables. And then one core cool feature of our Piccolo is it has migrations built in. So what happens is in our Piccolo app.py, we have something called an app config. And in this app config, we register our table classes. 
So you can see here that we've imported our tables from the tables module. And then the migrations can detect if a new table's been added, deleted, or if it's rows, if its columns have changed, and then it will create a migration accordingly. So here are my migrations. So let's have a look at this. So on these auto migrations, it's detected that it needs to add some tables. And these are created automatically for you, so you don't need to worry about this. Um, you can find out more in the documentation. I won't go into too much detail right now. So that's it. So um, that's our app. So we have our Piccolo app called Blog. We have our app.py, which is our ASCII app. And then we have a few Node.js bits and bobs um, because I keep, I use less for my CSS. So what I do is I, um, I like this because it means you can nest your tags. So it's less verbose than just using CSS directly. And then before I deploy, I just run build styles. So I just use um, this to build my styles. So that's it. That's, um, that's a look at a complete Starlet and Piccolo app that runs in production. I hope that's been useful. Thank you.